Hello and welcome to Off My Shelves and in this episode we're going to be looking at Cats of the Louvre by Tayo Matsumoro and yeah, we will get underway. Now, this was a total blind buy for me. I've been really obsessed with getting more manga and focusing on manga more so than other western comics and things like that just because it seemed like there were a lot more things in manga story wise that were catching my eye and catching my interests and so I kind of tried to focus a little bit more on that for a couple of months to flesh out my manga collection if you will but this book was a blind buy because I really liked the artwork of Taiyo Matsumura because it's very strange and surreal and realistic but unrealistic at the same time very expressive it's an interesting art style for manga I think because it's not clean lines and kind of it's not your typical manga art is what I'm trying to get at more than anything but Cats of the Louvre caught my eyes because it was just about a group of orphan cats making their home in the Louvre and then a mystery surrounding them so I was like well that sounds crazy I'll pick that up and I managed to get it fairly cheap and it comes in this beautiful hardback book because manga often comes in that quite cheap paperback format but this is slightly oversized so slightly bigger than your normal manga but not as big as your trade paperback great sewn binding really thick heavy matte finished paper some coloured pages but not too many majority of it's black and white and yeah and it's just a beautifully put together book really even the outside has got this kind of matte canvasy finish to I suppose to resemble the canvases in the art gallery that is talking about in France. So to the story, now this is my first Tayo Matsumura book that I read and I read this and then I went straight out and bought pretty much everything else that I could get my hands on by this author. Now why did I do that? Because when I read this I was so taken by how engaging it was and how I couldn't put it down but how it was unlike anything that I'd ever read before. And what I mean by that is even explaining the story, I don't think I could do a full justice to the story, just explaining it to it, because it's one of those books that you kind of have to experience and get into the world of the book to actually fully appreciate it, because a simple explanation almost sounds off-putting in a way, because essentially the story revolves around the art gallery, the Louvre and in France, and there's a group of cats there that make their home in an attic space there and an attendant is taking care of them and these cats have all got their own unique personalities when the cats are conversing with each other the book decides to depict them as conversing as anthropomorphic figures rather than cats so the cats jump between looking like real cats and anthropomorphic cats but it's not a real change it's kind of done for the story purposes more than anything at least that's how i interpreted it i didn't think these cats were changing into anthropomorphic human forms every time someone looked away it was just a way of getting across the characters and the sense of feeling and emotion that these cats are going through and because it's quite hard to emote a cat's face and to get those images across so putting them in human form makes them a bit more understandable but either way there are attendants then there's a group of three attendants that essentially work in the Louvre the old man attendant is training a new attendant coming in and he shows them the cats but he also asks him questions like can you hear the paintings talk and things like that and so you get a feel as to these cats lives you get a feel as to the lives of the attendants but then almost as you go forward slowly but surely it comes out that the older attendant had a sister and they often spent time in the Louvre and she just vanished one day and she would always be talking about how she could hear the paintings talk to her, how they came alive and things like that. And so as the book progresses, the other attendants get involved with this mystery and try to figure out what happened to this young girl. And the reason why they are interested is both the attendants kind of see these cats around the Louvre and suddenly the youngest one vanishes and then reappears a few days later and they don't quite understand what's going on but what they think might be happening is the cat is actually entering the paintings and living in the world of those paintings before returning back to reality and so that on paper if you read that as a synopsis that is a book about talking cats in an art gallery with people being able to walk in paintings and get lost in paintings it doesn't sound that interesting, but in the hands of Taiyo Matsumura, his artwork, his characterization, it just works so well. He paints and crafts such a 
wonderful story and such a human story and such an emotional story really. You really do get involved deeply in the lives of the cats, in the lives of the attendants and you want to find out where their story goes. And it's intriguing to me how Tayo Matsumura, because I've read a few more of his other books since reading this, because obviously I went a bit mad by his stuff, and he always seems to introduce mysterious elements, but he's never too bothered about explaining them or giving them too much context, which I really admire because he almost kind of just creates this world and then that is the world. The world is this. These cats are here, they're conversing with each other. These paintings can somehow be accessed by certain people. And he doesn't really bother spending much time explaining it. What he focuses on is the characters and how they deal with that situation, what they go through and how they end up at the end, basically. And I really admire that greatly because, again, so much of books these days kind of create an interesting premise and then a lot of them are almost terrified to kind of not explain themselves and to not tell you the mystery that they started. But when you are creating and world building, I think, sometimes you can just go, yeah, that's the way it is and move on. And I quite like that confidence. And that's one thing I will say about this is this confidence storytelling inside and out. I mean, it's so well paced and again you can probably get through it in one sitting really and I would think that you would find one of the characters if not a few of the characters to latch on to in this very strange surrealistic world that Tayo Matsumura creates. He's even got like anthropomorphic talking spiders in it and again when you're saying it it sounds like almost ridiculous and it's like a book that it might even put you off. This video may even put you off getting this. I think this is one of those books that are best experienced just picking it off the shelf and start reading it and start getting into it and seeing what it does to you. You may not like it, you may be frustrated by not having answers to certain things, you may like some characters more than others, but what it does do is it engages you, I think, massively and that's always what I'm looking for in a book. I hate books that you kind of just read and then put down and forget instantly and they don't really do anything for you and then two minutes later you're putting them on eBay. This is one of those books that I'm going to come back to time and time again and see if I can understand it differently, see if I can see a different point or a different way of understanding it, see if the characters that I liked the first time round still are likeable and interesting the second time round. And yeah, I can't pick it up enough really and I certainly think it's one of those books that for me took me totally by surprise and is a standalone, by the way, there's no other part of the story, this is just a one and done and yeah, and if you like weird surrealistic tales involving anthropomorphic cats, art galleries and just a weird and wonderful world really then this book is probably going to be right up your alley. There's no like you know high octane action like you would get in other mangas. It's very chilled out read and maybe that was one of the reasons that I liked it because I was reading a lot of other action based comics and when this came along it was a lovely settled, relaxed read, which everyone needs sometimes, I think. But yeah, that's all i got to say about Tayo Matsumura's Cats of the Louvre. Certainly, in my opinion, is one of the best books I've read in a long, long time. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed watching and I will catch you on the next one.